particular song that the Lord was speaking to me today before I speak the word of God. And he says, there's an anointing in the sanctuary. And that song, as, I, as we sing that song, the message has already begun in this ministry today. That the Lord is speaking to you directly to your spirit. So last Sunday we were speaking about the Holy Spirit. And today the Holy Spirit wants to minister to you. Thank you, Pastor Hassan, for speaking profound last Sunday about the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit wants to minister to you today. This time, as you sing that song, I want you to change the way we worship. I want you to change the way you sing. I want you to just let that word sink in your spirit. And the Lord will start speaking to you as you sing that song in Jesus' name. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and that we carry every day. Yes, the Lord knows the battles that we've been fighting every day. Yes, the Lord knows the struggles that we go every day. Yes, the Lord, Lord knows your financial situation. Yes, the Lord knows your mental situation. Yes, the Lord knows every addiction that we go through. Yes, the Lord knows the struggles of relationship and even settling down. Yes, the Lord knows even deeper things that no man knows in this world. But as we stand here today, we are making a declaration and we are making it as a prayer. And it's also coming another way in the form of God assuring us that in this sanctuary he is here. To lift every heavy burden that you carry. He wants to set you free. As we sing it one more time, He is here. 
I want you to release every burden to the atmosphere. I want you to give it to God. Everything with all your heart, with all your mind and everything, I want you to just trust God and release it to Him. Because He is here. I feel the power of God. I feel the presence of God. So I know beyond this one of doubt that He is here. And the Lord wants to set you free. In Jesus' name. He is here. He is here. He is here to break the yoke, to break the yoke and leave the heavy burden. He is here. He is here to be. together Lord we come acknowledging that we have no power of our own Lord we depend on you so much oh God that we come to this sanctuary Lord and we acknowledge that you are the only one that can take care of our burdens oh God it is only your word that can set us free it is just your knowledge that God when we get to know you more oh God that we get to know the different dimension that you can, you have, oh God. And this morning is our desire, God, that we may know you more, oh God. It's our desire that, God, we may have the revelation of who you are, oh God, in our life. That every struggle and every burden that we carry, oh God, will dissolve in your presence. So, God, we release ourselves unto you, God, that even in the next few minutes, that, God, as you speak your word to us, that your word will come with the power and revelation, O oh God. Father, how I capture every spirit, O oh God, and connect them with the spirit of the living God. That, Father, Lord, by your spirit you may minister to us, O oh God. We let us give us every distraction, O oh God. And everything that may hinder us from your move, O oh God. Holy Spirit, flow. For we pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Why don't you lose a hand and give God praise? Amen. 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 Thank you, praise and worship. You may sit down in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It is good and it is sweet to be in the presence of God. So this morning, if you're writing down, I want you to write down Mark chapter number 5. I want you to write down Mark chapter number 5. The reason that I want you to write it down is because we're going to study today. And when we go home, I want you to go and study Mark chapter number 5. And this is the season of Easter because next Sunday will be Palm Sunday and the following Sunday will be Easter Sunday. And as we come to celebrate Easter, the Lord was also speaking to me, showing me that
that the power that Jesus carries led by the Holy Spirit and if we acknowledge that power then when we come to Easter we'll have a great revelation because we already know the power that Jesus carries for those people who are here with us here on Sunday we are talking about the Holy Spirit now Mark chapter number 5 is a whole chapter that has um, 43 verses we are not going to read everything, but I want you when you go home to read everything on your own devotion time. But what I'm going to do for you in the next few minutes, because we are not going to take a lot of time, is to kind of like break it down for you so that you can acknowledge what the Lord is doing. Before you get to Mark chapter number 5, Mark chapter number 4, by the end of Mark chapter number 4, the Bible talks about when Jesus was in the boat and there was a great wind that came, the storm, and Jesus was sleeping in the boat. And the Bible says that everybody was crying and the disciples, and then when Jesus rose up, he came and he commanded the storm to stop. And the disciples was like, what kind of man is this that even the weed and the stones can obey them. And Jesus looked at them and said, Brothers, where is your faith? You of little faith, where is your faith? And he went back to sleep. That was Mark chapter number 4, the end of Mark chapter number 4. Now when we come to Mark chapter number 5, now Jesus now came from the boat. And now he is on the other side of the sea. And the Bible says that it was there that when he came out of the boat now, are we together? Now he came from coming the storm. Then he came out. And the first thing that we see in Mark chapter number 5, that he met a guy that was living in the tombs, and in the graveside, in the tomb. And the Bible says that this man was a very strong man. He was demonic possessed. That nobody could be able to tie him. People used to come and tie this guy with chains. And he will break those chains. And the Bible says that day and night. That this man used to live in the tomb. With the stones cutting himself. He was a dangerous man. He was possessed. And he met Jesus. And the minute he looked at Jesus. He said, man of son of God. What do you have to do with us? And Jesus looked at him. And the man now bowed down and he begged Jesus. He said, priest, the demon that were in him was speaking. They were melting when they saw the power of Jesus, when they saw the Son of God. And the Bible says that Jesus commanded those demons to come out of that man. And the demons were already negotiating with him. Where do you want to send us? And he said, priest. And he said, please send us to the pigs that were there. And they were sent to the pigs. And the pigs now went to the river. And that's a story for another day. But the Bible says that the pigs, they were all went to the river and the man was set free. That was the beginning of Mark chapter number 5. Now when the man that was possessed, he came now back and people came and they saw the man. And he was begging Jesus, was saying, can I go with you? And Jesus said, no, go to your people. And the Bible says that it was in Decapolis that people were shocked when they saw this young man now, the man that was possessed, coming and praising God. Hallelujah. Somebody said the power of our God. Amen. That nobody believed that this man can be set free. But when Jesus came, he made a difference in the mind of this man. So may I submit to you, it doesn't matter how far you've gone. It doesn't matter what the enemy has destroyed your family members. It doesn't matter what the enemy has done. But when Jesus comes, when the story of Easter comes, the death and resurrection, the power that was given to Jesus, when you have it, you can command a restoration in Jesus' name. Amen. So this was the beginning of Mark chapter number 5. Now, Jesus, as soon as 
This man was released. The Bible says, and I want you to see that, that a crowd of people came and followed Jesus. The crowd came and followed Jesus. Of course they will. If you hear that somebody has released that man free, even if you are not a believer, you still come. So everybody came and the crowd came. And now in the crowd, there was a man by the name of Jairus. He was a synagogue leader. So in other words, he was like a pastor or a minister of the time. And Jairus came. And he said, you know what? What I've seen you doing, I know you are son of God. I know you are a prophet. I know that you are from God. He said, my daughter is sick. She is just about to die. And his priest can you come and pray for her. And I know she will be set free. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that Jesus agreed. And he told Jairus, let's go. And I want everybody to follow me. Please do not. Please follow me. Keep following me. Okay. So the Bible says that now Jesus now came. He is now with Jairus. And the crowd is still following me. And the thing is, as he was walking, the crowd was growing bigger because everybody wanted to come and see what this man is all about. The crowd was getting bigger every day. Now Jesus walking with the power to Jairus' house. The Bible says that in the midst of him walking, there was commotion to so many people. And then there came another woman there in the crowd. And she touched the hand of garment of Jesus. The Bible says that this woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. And some gospel say that she had spent all her money with the physician. She had tried everything and nobody had healed her. But the woman said, if I can only touch the hand of the garment, I will be made whole. Hallelujah. So the Bible says that now women of that woman came and touched the hem of garment of Jesus. And Jesus now in the midst of everybody and the commotion and everything that was going on, Jesus said, oh. she said, somebody touch me. And the disciples, of course, somebody like Peter was like, Jesus, don't you understand? Don't you see how many people are in this crowd? We can't control them. And you are seeing that somebody touched me. Jesus, I don't think you understand because how can you not be touched with all these kind of people? But Jesus said, no. I'm not talking about pushy. I'm seeing this somebody that touched me. There's somebody in this church this morning who came, even though there are so many people, there's somebody who came and touched me. Jesus said, somebody touched me. Somebody touched me. And Peter said, how did you know that he touched you? He said, because I felt the virtue coming out of me. So this was a woman that had great faith. She had tried everything, didn't work. She purposed with her heart. And she said, if I can only touch, I don't even need to speak to him. I don't even need him to lay hands on me. I don't even know him. I don't want anybody to know because in the first place, the woman was not even supposed to be in the crowd. Because according to the book of Leviticus, if you had a issue of blood, if you have a condition like that one, you are supposed to be isolated from everybody else. So that woman in the first place was not supposed to be in the crowd. But she went and touched the hand of the coming of Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus now looked at her. And the Bible says that when she touched the hem, that the power came from Jesus and instantly, immediately, the woman was healed. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, immediately. She received her healing. And this morning, church, I don't know what is your issue, but as I speak the word of God, 
as you focus on Jesus, as you touch him, immediately your issue has to be solved in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The woman did not even need somebody to come and announce. The woman did not even need somebody to come and introduce her. The woman was going in shame. The woman was crawling in shame. And Jesus came and touched her. You know, in life, there are some times that shame carries us. Pain, disgrace, become a part of our life. And the enemy wants you to use that disgrace so that he can kill you. But as a child of God, when you have shame, when you have disgrace, when you feel like everything has, you are just about to give up everything, you have to be like this woman that had an issue of blood. Just grow and say, I don't even need you to lay the hand on me. I just want to come from behind and touch the hem. I don't even need the crop. I just need the hem of your garment. Hallelujah. And Jesus looked at that woman and he said, this is a great thing. Because this woman, Jesus is all knowing. And she knew it was by faith that this woman touched her. Hallelujah. So I don't know who is here today. Whatever the enemy has thrown on you, I want you to crawl back to Jesus and touch the hem of the garment. And you'll be made whole. Amen. Amen. Now that was a woman that was in the issue. This is happening. Remember, Jesus is on his own. I don't want you to lose where we are. Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. But now on the way, the woman come and the healing happened. And as soon as this discussion was over, <laughs> Jesus overheard. Somebody say, don't even bother the master. Because the girl is already dead. Alright? Let me tell you something. In life, there are people who will always bring negative reports to you. Now, Jesus was already on his mission. But this person said, ah, you know what? Don't even bother him. She's already dead. So when people see your situation, when people see you struggling, there are people who always come and say, don't even bother about that one because that one is already written off. When your financial thing is corrupting, there's always people who will come and say, I told you, I told you, you see, I knew, I knew this is how they're going to end it up with. There are people who are always there to light you off. And this is exactly what happened when Jesus was in the mission of healing. These kind of people say, you know what? Don't bother him. Don't bother the master. And those guys sounded like the religious people. Because they were like, you know, we honor the master so much. Please don't bother him. And religious people sometimes they are dangerous. Because they act like gates. Again, I told you, I told you, I told you, this one will not mount up to anything. But I pray in the name of Jesus that none of us will be that kind of a gate that will soon be able to see the power of God regardless of the situation. Amen? Now, Jesus had them. And he said, don't worry. He said, you guys, I know where I'm heading. The girl is sleeping, she's not dead. And they say, this man doesn't know what he's talking about. Jesus continued with the journey. But there's something that now the Bible says, we're still in the Mark chapter number five. That this time now, Jesus dropped some of the disciples and he only took three of them. Because he knew that these are the only three that can handle the faith. The mission that I'm going to, the dimension that I'm heading right now, there are some guys that cannot handle this. So he took three of them. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says he took Peter, James, and John. He said, you guys, let's go. So the Bible says that now he arrived at Jairus' house. As soon as he arrived at Jairus' house, 
Everybody was crying. Everybody was there crying. And say, what happened? Jesus is already dead. Jesus looked at them. He ignored what he had from them. Oh, they said she's dead. Jesus continued. And she looked at the dollar and she said, Talila Kum. Really? Little girl? That is her. And the cow woke up, looked at everybody. The one that was now dead, she came from the dead. She was given back her life. And Jesus said something that I think is like an advanced psychology. Jesus, first of all, she told them, give them something to eat. But then he told them, do not tell anybody. Praise the Lord. Who see a beer? Want to. Do not tell anybody. But you know what? Jesus was telling them that because he knew that the minute they live here, the magnitude of that miracle is so big, they cannot keep quiet. Hallelujah. So they left. And Jesus brought that girl to life. But I just want you to see something here. The Bible concludes. I've gone through for you the whole of Mark chapter number 5. The Bible concludes by saying that the little girl, that girl, she was 12 years old. She was 12 years old. So there must be a connection that when Jairus gave birth to this little girl, for 12 years the house of Jairus was having the joy of the girl. And in the same year, we find that this, this woman had an issue of blood for 12 years. That means when there was celebration in the house of Jairus, on the other hand, the woman had cried and had troubles for 12 years. Now what brought the difference is when Jesus entered into the situation. Praise the Lord. When Jesus came, the woman that had been troubled for 12 years, the minute she met Jesus, Jesus set her free. And for Jairus, the daughter that had died and was 12 years, when Jesus came, he brought a difference and brought her back to life. So the bottom line here is, regardless of what situation you are going through, regardless of where you are, the only solution that we have is Jesus. Hallelujah. Look at him and say, give me Jesus. Hallelujah. Because when we have Jesus, then you have everything. Because when Jesus came, if you are having an issue of blood, he will come and set you free. When Jesus comes, even though you've been living in shame, he will come and set you free. When Jesus comes, even though nobody acknowledges who you are like this woman, he will come and set you free. When Jesus comes, even though the society does not legally accept you, Jesus will come and set you free. And when Jesus comes, and you have faith like Jairus should be able to invite the master over every situation, over everything that you are going through. Now, another issue, something that I wanted to mention to you. The Bible says that the woman had an issue of blood. Hallelujah. The woman have an issue of blood. And when I was looking at the issue, I said, wow, we all have issues. Hallelujah. We all have issues in our own lives. The issues could not be the issue of blood like the woman. But we could have family issues. You can have some situation issues. You can have some issues that are difficult. You can have some issues that are hard to deal with. And that's why the community, the society that we live with, they are so good in telling people that you have issues. You know? The way they dismiss you, they say, leave alone that one they have 
issues. So that now tells him that this word was not new. It was used, but now it was used in another dimension. It was brought to say that when you have issues, the only solution is now, now pointing you back to Jesus. Because friends may not be able to deal with their issues. Family may not be able to deal with their issues. The church may not be able to deal with their issues. The elders may not be able to deal with their issues. Pastors may not be able to deal with their issues. But Jesus can deal and will deal with every issue that you are going through. Hallelujah. So when you have an issue, bring it to Jesus. When you have a situation, bring it to Jesus. So that's why today I am encouraging you about the power of Jesus because that's why he died. And the Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus from the grave is the same power that we may and you have been given. And we've been given the name that is above every name. We've been given the name that is above every title. And the Bible says that in the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord. So Jesus, when you have issue, you give them to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now the problem becomes when we give issues to ourselves. Because what the issue does, issues become like a cancer. So it's only eat you from inside. Keep eating you. Keep eating you. Keep eating you. And you keep shrinking from inside because of the issues. But the minute you give them to Jesus and let them go, then Jesus come and takes over and he is our healer in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's number one about the issue. Another point that I want you to draw from Mark chapter number 5 is Jairus knew that Jesus was a healer. And that's why she had enough faith to come and say, Jesus, please, my daughter is sick. I want you to come and heal her. But what happens when you know that Jesus can do something for you and then you come and then you get disappointed because Jesus did not do what you are supposed to do. Or things come and you see that I know Jesus will heal me. Because look at it. Along the way, when Jesus had them talking about that he is dead, I want you to know that Jairus had already been given the same report. That now they were telling Jairus, you know what? I know you had good intention when you called him, but please do not bother him. Instead of calling him, you need to start looking for the committee to come and pray for the burial of your daughter. Now what happens in the, along the way when you have trusted God, when you know that God will do it for you, and then you get the report that are so discouraging, you got the issues and things that now you know that it is over. Because when we talk about death, there was nothing else to do. You are told that the daughter that you are trusting that she will be well. She is already dead. What do we know as Christian? When everything that you have trusted God for come collapsing down, what do we do? Now, remember Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is all knowing and Jesus is all powerful. So, what was happening? If Jesus knew that Jairus, the crowd, and everybody else knew him as a healer. But now, because the faith was elevated, he wanted to take them to another dimension of him. He wanted to reveal to them another dimension of him. He said, I'm not only a healer, but there's something else that you guys don't know about me that I can also resurrect. I can bring people who are dead back to life. Somebody did God praise. I don't think somebody got that revelation. Because if you got it, you should be praising God. Take like one minute and praise God. If you already know what I talked about. 
Amen. Let me repeat it for somebody in this house. Jairus, the crowd, and everybody knew Jesus as a healer. But Jesus came and said, because you guys are so used to me as a healer, there's something else that I didn't tell you. That there's another dimension of me that you guys don't know. That I wanted her to die so that when I get there, I'm not laying hand for her to be well. I am calling her forth from the grave, from the dead, and giving her back life. Because I'm not only a healer, but I also carry life. I am the giver of life. So I can resurrect anything that I want to resurrect because I am Jesus. I have the power to bring back things to life in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Maybe this morning the suffering that is in pastor she don't understand my situation in death. I don't have any videos I can do about it. That is you. But when you call Jesus, there's another way that Jesus can do it for you. Hallelujah. That is you. When you come to the end of yourself, say, Pastor, mine is over. That marriage is dead. Pastor, that situation is over. And there's nothing else that I can do. Jesus comes back and says, yes, there's nothing else that you can do. It's because you don't know the other dimension of me that I bring back things to life that are supposed to be dead. Hallelujah. That is Jesus. That's what he does. Amen. And you also have to remember that the same thing happened when his friend Lazarus died. Jesus waited. They tried to call him. He didn't show up. They tried to text him. He didn't show up. And then finally they say, you know what? It was the friend, and the one that was heading with. By the time that we really needed him, he was nowhere to be found. Does that sound like some of your friends? When you didn't need them, or contagion. But when you really, 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 really need them, it's when you can't find them. Does that sound like somebody? Does that sound like familiar? Now that happened to Jesus and Lazarus. Because you have to realize that Lazarus was not just any other guy out there. Lazarus and Jesus used to hang out together. But the Bible says that when he was sick, they tried to look for him. Jesus was busy in the ministry. And finally, when he died, they said, let me just send him a message. He will see that he's dead. I'm a Kufa, so he doesn't even have to worry about it. Even when they sent the message the first day, he didn't respond. The second day, he didn't respond. And then he came back to the, oh, oh my goodness. Then, the fourth day, Jesus came dragging himself. And he came to Lazarus' house. As he said, he said, Master, if you showed up when we called you, I'm sure you could have healed him. Jesus look at them and say, where have you kept him? And they know that he's going there to give the final respect. And the Bible says that when Jesus came, he looked at where they had laid him. And he said, buddy, please rise up. Bless us. Come out. And the brother that was dead, the brother that was already stinking, he woke up and looked at Jesus. And they started to have a conversation. As Jesus, hallelujah, do not limit Jesus. Can I give you something here? The Bible says that Jesus called him Lazarus. Come out. There's a reason why Jesus called him by his name. Because Jesus was the resurrection. If Jesus stood there and said, come out without mentioning Lazarus, it could have been a disaster in that city. Because every dead person would have come out from the grave. Because Jesus is the resurrection. And he was calling the power of resurrection 
pressure to come from the heat. Hallelujah. That's why he was to be so specific and say, I'm not calling everybody from the grave because I have the power to do it. I'm not calling your grandparents and your grandmother and everybody to come because you don't want to see them. I am calling Lazarus only. Hallelujah. And so Lazarus came out and Jesus started continuing to hang out with him. Because Jesus wanted to reveal to his brothers and his sisters and his friends that you guys are so used to me as a healer, but there's another dimension of me that you guys don't understand. Hallelujah. This morning I come to start somebody faith that you are so used to Jesus because he come and do it for you when you pray. You come and you trust God for this, but there's another dimension of Jesus that you do not know. He is also able to go above and beyond what you think. He is Jesus. Hallelujah. He is God and God all by himself. And the classification of God is different from the classification of man. So this morning, as you prepare yourself for the Easter, I want you to know that you are getting yourself to another dimension of power. Because Jesus came and he set you free. He came for you so that you can be free and free indeed. So I don't know what you brought to the altar this morning. I don't know what you are calling this morning. But I, one thing I can tell you. That we have Jesus that has power to resurrect things that are dead in Jesus' name. Everything that is fading. Jesus will set it free for you. Jesus will align it for you because he is Jesus. Yes. Mark chapter number 5. It lays all those dimensions in one chapter. And it's just amazing to see everything that was just happening in one particular chapter. Mark chapter number 5. As you go home, I want you to go home knowing that there's something. There's something so special that God is doing in your life and this season of prosperity but he wants you to start understanding him in every dimension hallelujah Amen. because you see um, when we talk about relationship you may know your spouse as a good cook but maybe you don't know that he is also a good driver. You may know your spouse in one dimension, but maybe it is another dimension that you have not known about your spouse. In the same, same things with the kingdom of God, there are some principles of the kingdom that me and you have to understand so that we can enjoy the totality of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Like now, number one, I'll give an example. Maybe you know Jesus as a healer because Jesus has healed you. But then, have you also understood the principle that Jesus is also a giver because he can give you? Hallelujah. Have you also understood the principle of Jesus in terms of finances because Every financial need and everything that you need on prosperity is also come from the key that is given to Jesus to you from Jesus. But you also have to understand the principles of that particular area. So as Christians, we have to understand the principles of every area of our kingdom. And once you understand that principle, we will be great in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, church, and I'm winding up. Sometimes it's amazing for me to see when we see the list of the richest people in the world. I don't see intercessors over there. And I keep asking, how come the list of the 10 people, richest people, or 20, we don't see Pastor so and so. We don't see intercessor so and so. People who spend 20 hours in the house of praying. But then maybe the area of finances 
they cannot even afford to take their children to school. They cannot even afford to live in a good house. Then you say, God, then what is, the, what is the work of the altar? But I came to understand this. You may understand God in one dimension, but then you don't know the principle of the other dimension. And that's why we, as a church, we need to wake up and say, we want to understand God in the area of prayers and fasting and everything. But I also, I want to understand God in the principles of finances so that I can be a king of financial, so that I can grow in wealth and live in hands to my children and my children's children. Hallelujah. And I see some people of the world, let me preach it, they are even leaving their inheritance to dogs. They night in the will, they say, when I die, my chihuahua will inherit 50 million. It's happening in the world. Mm. And then when we go to the children of God, we just pay salutes to them and say, let's in peace. And they have left nothing. And if that does not bother us, you, we should, we should start praying from today and say, none of us in this world, in this church, will die and not leave in inheritance to his children. Hallelujah. Because there's another dimension that we have to understand. That dimension of God. Hallelujah. That is only one. You want me to give you a second one that we can pray? The area of marriage and relationship. Every day we are attending weddings from the people who have met online, from the people who on Instagram and all that. Then we come to the house of God. It's not happening. Let's go that you mean and tell God what we need to do. We need to understand the principles of marriage according to the word of God so that we can apply them in the church every Sunday and every week you should be having weddings in this place. Hallelujah. Principles is principles. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, Pastor just talking about the principles. Amen. It's the principles of the kingdom. Amen. It's just the principles. Amen. So I'm not stepping on anybody. I'm just talking about the principles. Hallelujah. I am just talking about the principles. But you can see me in the office after this. Amen. So that, that's now about the area of relationship. Amen. But what I come here today to tell you, church, in all fairness and everything, that we need to understand the principles of the kingdom of God. Because when we have Jesus, we have everything. So whatever burden and whatever issue we carry, I believe with all my heart that Jesus is able to help us and to set us free. We are laying a firm foundation here according to the word of God. And this foundation says that when you have Jesus, you've laid everything on a firm foundation. Jesus is all we need. Jesus is all that we need. And I came here to tell you that if we apply those principles in our life, our life will never be the same again. find God? Open your heart. You can't see God with your eyes. You, get, you only get to see God with your heart. As soon as you open your heart, God is going to come through. But we can see, all the way from Somali, dedicated Muslim, and here he is.
preaching the good news. Amen.